Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, thanks for tuning in for another session of James and Jay Dissects the Walking Dead. A uh, couple of announcements before we go jump on in here. Uh, if you can tell, my background is a little bit different than usual. Uh, we're in the process of moving still. So it'll be like this for at least the next episode or so. Um, and hopefully we get back to the nice little office scene that we've had. So I'll be streaming from the couch, so expect a cat or, or two to walk on by and distract me from the show. Uh, other than that, our charity for this uh, level two charity here is the Humane Society. Uh, if you missed our last episode with T.W. Brown, I'll kind of want to detail as far as why we chose that. But basically, we love animals. We have a bunch of rescues ourselves and uh, everyone here at Echo Pop Studios. And uh, we want to make sure that all the little fur babies gets love, attention, food, shelter, and all the necessities that they need to live and uh, hopefully be adopted. So if you guys can donate, please donate. There are links down below on our Twitch and YouTube channels. If you guys can donate, we understand that. What you can do to help us out is just follow us on all the social medias, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube in particular. Um, if you guys could like, subscribe, and comment to us on there, that would be appreciated. Uh, all the ad revenue that we get from the videos on YouTube goes to the charity. Can't tell you guys to click on the ads directly. But we just told you what we do with that ad revenue, so do with that information as you will. And YouTube has decided to change their ad policies a little bit uh, due to some uh, stream videos being on their website. So it's, we need your help. In other words, we need people watching videos and to subscribe so that way we can keep gaining money from the ads and keep donating that on behalf of all your viewers out there to our charities. Other than that, guys... Tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about Season 8. We have some uh, good questions from our viewers. Uh, we have some news to talk about as far as changes over at the uh, Walking Dead chain of command. And, of course, what our predictions are for the upcoming half season. But, James, what's going on, man? Well, you know, just had a, a diatribe, I guess you could say, a discussion with Jay about I'm, like, cursed from anything that... Uh, Anything involving me interacting with my favorite, you know, zombie genre, uh, it, whether it's food poisoning or, you know, now a sibling's wedding it, or a birth of a child or a first birthday of a child, any kind of life changing events or bad food have knocked me completely out of the Monroeville Mall and now Walker Stork Convention for the third consecutive year. Um, of course, right? <laughs> it's like, of course. We'll have the reason for that. Uh, we're going to try to get the reason for me uh, not making the Walker Starker convention uh, in 2018 on the next show. We won't go into any more. I want to save that for the show because we want him to explain himself. So uh, for the next show, you watch and you know, you've heard me. Some of you have heard me uh, rant about it a little bit. So you know what I'm talking about. But for the other viewers that are in Connecticut or don't work directly with me in my office to hear my rants, you will get to find out in the next show to be a little surprise, but uh, me a little bit more interactive. Um, have as many guests as we can on a show, famous or not. Um, they're all guests to us, and uh, this this guy's pretty famous in my family. Uh, he's the baby. So um, see if we can get him on next week. Uh, if not, see if we can get him on before the show. Um, but uh, just outside of that. Everything is good, you know. F felt good coming back. T. W. Brown joined us again. Just an awesome dude. Um, you know, he's just so into you know helping people out that are you know that you know that ask for help. I mean, he's he's not like a typical celebrity that you have to pay and say, hey, you gotta give you all this money. He's just such a down to earth guy. Hey, hey, you want to join us for the show? Yeah, no problem. Invite me yeah. on. There's nothing, you know, no, yeah. no. There's no. You know, there's no hidden agenda. It's just he, the guy just is a fan of the genre, and he's he appreciates people reaching out to him and supporting him. So he comes back and supports us. So again, thank you, T.W. Brown, uh, for joining us for a second time. We look forward to T.W. Brown Part Three, um, and uh, go from there. But uh, big show, Jay. I let you kick it off. We got the review of season eight so far. What we think? We got the. You know, the big news about season eight, which we could start with if you want. And then we got our prediction and then a couple of good questions that Jay and I will have to use our brains for um, in this show. So, <laughs> yeah, right, let's, uh, let's kick off some of the news. Huh? New showrunner. That, that changes. Oh. Uh, 
basically everything. I mean, yeah. we've, we've had a few changes here since the uh, beginning of the the series, and uh, you can definitely feel the different uh, attentions that each each different showrunner brings to the show, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be strange. Now, um, it's not gonna affect the second half as much as as season nine will, uh, because they already shot you know a few episodes, obviously, because the season premiere is gonna come up after the Super Bowl, so they already shot those episodes. Um, do we know actually know when she's going to be on board? Like when the first episode is it going to be season nine. Okay, so Andrea Kong has been promoted to the executive producer and showrunner. People will know some of her episodes. She's wrote twenty of them so far. Um, her top episodes were Coda and Still. Two episodes that I really didn't like too much. Uh, I did not like Coda. If you, if people remember Coda, it was the season five mid season finale where they killed Beth off. Um, I thought it was forced. Um, and then still was the bottle episode of Beth and um, of Daryl in season in season five um, when they went out and, uh, you know, got Beth drunk for the first time. Mm-hmm. She's had many other um, episodes that I did like. I, I, you know, she did help write clear, which is one of my favorite episodes. Yes. Um, but, you know, um, they're saying that she's going to start in season nine. Um so Jay is correct. He was correct at first, and he said that this season there's nothing they're doing about this season that's different in in terms of the showrunner. There wasn't a dismissal during the production of season eight, um, and this is actually isn't a dismissal. This is a promotion for Scott Gimple. So Gimple is moving to the chief content officer, overseeing everything Walking Dead, um, taking basically Kirkman's spot in a way. Um, Kirkman will be obviously the owner, but Gimple will be in charge. You know, Kirkman has a lot more projects and stuff that he's running on. Gimple is basically turning into Kirkman in this point, in this, in this, uh, in this fashion. So, while fans, you know, want to see a change and they're 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 calling for for Gimple's head, he must be doing something right because he got promoted to being the big dog, and <laughs> now, you know, a like Jay said, they're not going to change anything that they've already shot. Now these people are at homes with their families. So we're going to get the rest of season eight, season eight as Gimple produced it. But now Gimple will be Kirkman and Angela Kong will be Gimple. So we're going to see a big change in writing styles. Um, it's a rumor that we may be going back to a little bit of storytelling because Kong likes to tell, tell stories in, in, in her own way. So, you know, hopefully it, we don't go back to season seven um type of shows hopefully we do get more of the clear if they are going to be like bottle type episodes hopefully we get those epic episodes like clear um uh, uh, here here's not here you kind of want those type of bottle episodes and not the oceanside story bottle episode so we, we kind of gotta like hold our breaths here and, and and continue to ride with the ship so um that's definitely big news um I don't know. What do you think about that, Jay? You know, I'm going to look up the episodes that she wrote. Um, but Jay, give us a thought on what you think about it. You know, some some uh, some of the fans saying, "Yeah, you know, they don't like change." Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you know, going into season eight, you know, I held Gimple to like a very high standard. Yes. And uh, you know, season seven, I was like, Eesh, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like a bigger letdown. You know, after, after mm-hmm. season six, I mean, it was just downhill. Then. And we'll talk about our season eight, but for me, it's hey, you know, sometimes a good shakeup helps helps the uh, the series out. So we'll see. I mean, as far as viewership goes, it's just been going down. So seven point eight nine million for a mid season finale. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's 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 horrible. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I think uh, it's well deserved a little change. Um, you know, uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, like I said, I, I, some of our episodes I wasn't a big fan of, but some episodes, you know, I really was. So it's roll those dice, you know, see what we get. You know, get a one or a twenty in there, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> plus, we're not even sure what the season nine uh, main story is going to be about. Don't because they they took away you know the biggest character of that arc, in my opinion, in Carl. Yeah. Um, but here goes a list of her episodes and. You know, we'll give you our thoughts on the ones that stand out. So you've got Secrets, which is episode uh, six of season two. 
that's when Lori came out and told Rick that she was pregnant uh, with uh, Shane's baby, uh, most, you know, most likely. Again, that was like kind of like the pendulum to, you know, the midseason finale. Um, it was okay. Judge, jury, executioner. You're starting to see where we're going with this. That episode was a bottle episode, but it was Dale Swan song. I love that episode because it was Dale Swan song. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you got to see the death of a great character there. Um, she did, you know, she did incorporate a comic book moment in Secrets. You got to see her kill off Dale in a successful way, in my opinion. Um, then three five is say the word. Um, I didn't, you know, again, that's another bottle episode, I guess you could say. Um, I ain't a Judas 311. Um, that's, I think that's the one where, uh, Daryl and Merle come back. Um, and this is just before Daryl on the doorstep. So, you know, they, they, uh, I think they saved, they didn't save Tyrese. I think Tyrese made it to Woodbury. I can't remember for sure, but it was again, another filler episode Mm -hmm. infected. Um, great episode. That was the after the season four uh, season premiere. In fact, it took place action packed episode where the prison was overrun with the flu victims. I love that episode, and it was uh, shown that Carol was responsible for it, but not really. They didn't show it, but they they showed that you had you had a killer within. I guess you could say. Right. Yeah. Um, then you had still. I told you I didn't really like that too much. You had uh, A, which was the season finale of season four. It was okay. I just felt it could have been better. Good cliffhanger. Not like season six cliffhanger. She also wrote that with Gimple. Uh, wasn't one of the strongest season finales, but again, it was okay. Uh, four Walls and a Roof, very good episode. Um, Coda, didn't like it because I didn't like the hospital storyline. Uh, 515 Try, that was the s- before the season finale of uh, season five. Uh, you know, it was what... It was where Michonne knocked Rick out. I mean, it was okay, but again, for a pendulum episode, I think it could have been stronger. Um, one of my favorite episodes of all time, Thank You. That's when Nicholas and Glenn, that was the fake Glenn death. Incredible episode. That might have been the best written episode she's had. Um, 610, The Next World. That obviously was with, you know, Jesus talking to the group, saying there's a bigger world out there. Filler episode. Same boat. That was the Carol and uh, Maggie uh, bottle episode where they had they were against the two female protagonists and this you know they got kidnapped and brought to the one of the satellite posts and they're right. waiting for the rest of the saviors to come. That was a good episode. Um, the Cell seven three. I didn't like any of the first couple of episodes in, in 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 season seven to be honest with you, um, except for the premiere. So I didn't like that one. Um, that's that's obviously with Daryl being trapped in Easy Street. Um, uh, then you got Sing Me a Song. Anybody who read the comic books knows that episode. It was okay. That was the Carl standout episode. Um, Rock in the Road. Didn't like it. Um, that was the <laughs> season premiere of season seven. I did not like it. Uh, first Day of the Rest of Your Life was the best season finale she wrote. Loved it um, because it was it was very intense. It had a great moment with Sasha. 8-5, The Big Scary You. Uh, you know, the King, the Widow, and Rick, uh, that's 8-6, and then, of course, How It's Gotta Be, that was the last episode, that was, um, the season 8 mid-season, uh, finale, that was an okay, I think that, like I said, I think they didn't do Carl Justice, I think they should have killed him off, they're gonna kill him off, you gotta give him a better death than this, um, everything that we're reading and hearing about, it just seems like it was forced, um, this death was another forced death, like Dale's death, like Andrea's death, like Beth's death, Carl's death. All these deaths have one thing in particular. They all seem forced as if there was some sort of, you know, conflict with the writer and the actual character. Um, obviously, you know, we're getting different stories from different people. But the main objective of the story is Carl Grimes and his family did not like the way his character was being portrayed. And did not like the way his character was being, you know, his, you know, the actor was being treated. Um, it's just what, what I'm reading. I don't know the truth. Obviously, they decided this in the, in before the season started to kill him off. But, uh, you know, little hints. He was, you know, he was at conventions and they were asking him, you know, what do you see? Uh, where do you see Carl's character going this season? What do you see him doing? And he, you know, in a quip said, holding Judith again. 
you know so it was like this is a major character in the comic book and and the actor himself is saying hey look all they have me doing is holding a baby you know what I'm saying? So yeah, like in the comics, he's a badass. He is, yeah. and I think that I think that he they didn't do him justice. I mean, he's really watered down in the show. Or they've seen be, Judith get killed off than than him, you know? Jeez. Correct, and that would have actually been, you know, my friend Stan, give him a shout out. He thought that the season mid season finale would have them kill off Judith, and that was a good, you know, good prediction because it made more sense than killing off Carl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what if like, like when they're throwing grenades over the the fence line, you know, what if you know, you have like the girl that's been, you know, taking care of Judith while Rick's, you know, out talking to the garbage people, you know, yeah. she's running and then all of a sudden Carl watches as a grenade blows blows her and Judith up. Yeah. Done. And you know, that's that's the same homage to the uh you know, the Comic prison books. yeah, the prison yeah. comics. It's just like oh, that's man They dropped the ball. Yeah. They dropped the ball with that. So you know I feel bad we for all... the kid too, man. We'll talk yeah. I think it was a good time to talk about. I feel bad because he's 18 years old. He's just a kid, you know. He, yep. he had everything lined up. He got he has a house, you know, in Atlanta. He was ready to go to college, yep. uh, Auburn. You know, he had everything set to go for at least three more years. They promised him, yep. and uh, they turn around and they, they pull the rug out from underneath him. Now he's changing his life, you know. Now he's, he's going to move out to California to try to you know continue his acting career, you know. And now everything's changed for him. It's just like man, he's 18 year old, you know. Yeah. Don't, and his father took it personally too. I mean, when he tweeted that, you? you know, a yeah. year ago, saying, "Hey, thanks to AMC for everything they've done," I'm sure that was like a little slap in the face, saying, "Like, hey, if people put the two and two together and they figure out that my son's getting killed off, whatever." You know, I didn't come out right, you know, right out and say it, but you know, it's pretty obvious what he was meant by that. And after the fact, after the episode, he was pretty irate as far as you know, he never trusted Gimple or yeah, some executives. Man. And, scathing, scathing, mad yeah. tweet. Yeah, which but, I mean, that's um, his boy. Yeah, yeah. I got a son, so I know. I know what I would, I, how I would feel in that situation. And you want some answers. And uh, you know, this is a not not only a cash cow, but this is a legacy here. You know, you're Carl Grimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, you know, you watch any of the great sitcoms, and you think to yourself, what if they would have killed off Theo Huxtable, or what if they would have killed off Carl Banks? From Fresh Prince of Bel Air, or nine hundred two one zero, kill off you know uh, Brandon Walsh. You know what I'm saying? You you kill off a major character of a staple. What would you? How would you feel about it if it didn't match what you were used to? So it's it was definitely a reach. And thinking you know, reading what the father said and, and looking back at how they were hinting on it, and and even Carl Grimes saying, "Hey, I wasn't I wasn't." in agreement with this decision and now looking at how it relates to uh em- emily keeney as beth it's almost parallel emily keeney went from being this star and she didn't want to be off the show to now she's writing music and had to move to california well carl grimes or chandler riggs is doing the same exact thing so it's almost like yeah come on you know you know i mean it's one thing those characters and everything like hey, these are human beings you know and yes it's like and you know like i like gimple but then like you know Season seven was shitty. Season eight, yeah. you know, I'll expand it more, but I'm not a big fan of it now. You know, mm-hmm. and then this is just like, man, are you trying to make us hate you? You know, and just some exactly. of the interviews he's been doing is it's like, well, this is what you know, this is my story. You know, if you don't like it, then whatever. It's like, nah, man, it's not how this works. It's exactly, it's not really how it works because once you start losing, and I know that they say the fans will be there and whatnot, but. You're losing millions of fans now. You're going from you went from 12 million back in season six, averaging 12 million a show, just about, and now you're down to just about seven and a half million. If you count the 11 million um, viewers in the premiere, you're a little bit over eight. But if you take that away, you're at least at seven and a half. So you went from 12 and a half to seven and a half in basically three years. Mm-hmm. You lost five million viewers. What's it going to be in three years from now? You, you're talking about the show is going to go twenty years. There's no way it's going to go twenty years. Like I think that they're limping into season nine, and I think that if season nine's numbers don't, you know, reflect well by the mid-season, you know, finale where they usually announce the renewal of the next season, I think that you're going to start to hear something like season series finale um, coming after, you know, either season nine or season ten. And I think that if you look at it, I think Fear the Walking Dead is starting to take over as a favorite here. Um, but I think Gimple, like Jay said, I think I think Gimple is taking it as 
this is how I want to write the story. You're going to like it or you're going to leave it. And you can't, that's not how you interact with the fans. <laughs> you yeah, know, the, yeah. the season six finale and his response to that and how cold he was to a complete blunder, you know, should have, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too. It should have alerted us of things to come because season seven was just one long drawn out storyline that nobody liked and made no sense to have the way it did. They added elements in that they didn't have to add. They added in protagonists. They didn't have to add. And they're talking about telling a story. What? What do you, season seven was supposed to be the Uh, Negan coming out party. And it was in some ways, but it really didn't do justice to the character Negan in the comic book. And this, and this, uh, this part of the comic book, this, 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 this portion of the comic book wasn't explained correctly. And now season eight started off promising, but Gimple went back into his old ways, just all scatterbrained and not caring really what the viewer thinks and making decisions based on what he wants to see, trying to make this its own, you know, its own, you know, its own monster. But it really sh- you can't fuck with things too much. Not I could see you killing off somebody else but Carl Grimes, man. He's way alive in the comic books, and he's he's Rick Grimes' son. He's the future, and it's just like, what are you trying to say? Are you indirectly saying I'm killing off the future of the show? You know, because you got to start reading between the lines a little bit. Like, what are you doing? What's next? You want to kill Rick? Oh yeah, you know, what, just giving everybody a finger. You know? I'm yeah, saying, like yeah, I told what? you it was my show. It's like, man, fuck yeah. you. Yeah, what are you doing? Now you're kind of getting arrogant here, buddy. And you know, I love The Walking Dead. I'm gonna ride or die with it, but. I'm also going to critique it, and I've had the chance to go back and look at these episodes, and some of the episodes I liked, and some of them I didn't. I'm more leaning saying, this isn't that much better than season seven, you know? Mm-hmm. Really, it really isn't. And and you know they had their moments, but you know season seven was so terrible. This uh, this season should have been the redemption season. I just don't feel that way after rewatching it and and. and you know, with this big, massive death of Carl, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It just yeah, doesn't I'm make not, sense. I'm not going into the mid-season confident. Mm-hmm. No, me neither. I think that this second part of the season is going to be a clusterfuck. And I think that we're going to be in for more disappointment and more heartbreak in the second half of the season. It's almost like they're cleaning house in the wrong way to set up for season nine. Um, you know, Angel- Angela Kang is running into a bigger... You know, she it's not like, you know, Scott Gimple had to fill in for Mazzara, but he had like some of the groundwork. So he took somebody's mess and he, you know, he fixed it in his own way. Andrea Kong is coming in and <laughs> she, she's got a big mess. <laughs> yeah, it would be like if, if uh, you know, we go back to Fear the Walking Dead, you know, they yeah. turn that show around. So the new showrunner is going to be like, nice. This nice. is the opposite. This is like. Oh, well, it's doing great. All of a sudden, it's like, uh, yeah, this is kind of shitty. Hey, I know? just fumbled it, at, uh, you know, on the opponent's two-yard line, and uh, you got 20 seconds left on the fourth quarter. Good luck. You Good know, luck. I was like, oh, great. And yeah. I just went to IMDb uh, for Walking Dead, and it shows, you know, the cast members. And guess who's at the top? Chandler Riggs. Chandler Riggs. 115 episodes. Yep. Andrew so you Lincoln, take somebody now. Na- tied to with 115, but I mean, Chandler Riggs comes first, and it's, uh, yeah, you got the number one. You got the num the 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 number one guy and and uh, Rick Grimes, the number two guy and Chandler Riggs. They were one two in the premiere episode, and just the fact that you're taking away Carl Grimes the way you did, you know, didn't see him get bit, didn't indicate that he got bit, secretly supposed to have gotten bit, like it's a big secret. You know, it's just, you know, it it was almost like Fear of the Walking Dead where the mother got bit. And you didn't know she got bit. And then at, at the end, she revealed the same exact bite mark that Carl had. You know, so it's like, why would you give him the same death as a nobody from season one of Fear of the Walking Dead? Literally, the same exact death. The zombie bit the woman on the side. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she died. And it's they're found their own cliches here where, oh, here's a guy found the moral compass again. Got to kill yep. him off. Got to kill him off. Because you can't prove anything unless you die, apparently. You had to be a martyr. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's annoying, you know, we go back to Dill, same thing, you know, we got to stand up for, you know, the prisoner's rights or human rights, who are we? Yeah. Oh, let's kill them off, that'll get them, that'll send the message into them. Yeah, T-Dog, Dale, Tyrese, Herschel, Carl, Andrea, you know, the list goes on and on and on. You got these epic characters just being killed off when they become the moral compass, like Jay says. Mm -hmm. You know, Noah, Bob Stuckey. Just like what the hell? Like any seriously? kind of op optimism, any type Beth. of hope. Yep. Yeah. Come We're on. Be okay. Nope. Nope. Dying. Dead. And and you know, he even did it to the damn tiger, Shiva. <laughs> you know, it's like I understand Shiva because it was part of the comic book, but some of these characters, you know, you clearly, you cl like like Jay said, you're you're following you you're falling into a rut here. You're following the same cliche. You start to have hope, we got to kill you off because we don't want anybody to have hope. You could do that in different ways. And it's just, I, I just don't, I don't get it. Um, it's, like, it's starting to become redundant and it's, it's starting to irritate even the hardcore fans. And when it starts to irritate the hardcore fans, you know, that are going to watch no matter what, that's when you really are going to lose the low level fans because now the hardcore fans, when you go to work or you go out and talk about it, they're telling God, they're telling people who are already on the fence, yeah, the show isn't as good as it used to be. Oh, guess what? Three more people now hear that and like, why are we going to waste time watching it? Yeah. Why are we going to binge watch this on Netflix? I was proud to tell people when the season six was playing and people were like, oh, we got to get caught up. I would tell people right away, you're missing the best season ever. Yeah, I have not to. said Hurry that up. since. Yeah. yeah, I have not said that since. And I now, haven't said that like, you know what? I mean, we can't, you know, Sunday night, I'm tired, you know, I just, I won't stay up, or, you know, I, hey, someone wants to do something else, all right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'll catch it when I catch it, no big deal. And yeah. it's, it's not how it should be, you know, we should be eager, and now it's just, yeah, I don't it's, know. All right, so let's, let's go let's go over season eight. Uh, you want to yep. go episode by episode, or just kind of, go, kind of go over, like, our general feeling of it? All right, so, let me just bring it up. All right, so, we'll, we don't have to go by episode by episode, but favorite episodes... All right, so we have Mercy, The Damned, Monsters, Some Guy, The Big Scary You, The King, The Widow, and Rick, Time for After, How It's Gotta Be. Okay, so, Jay, favorite episode of the season, if you can remember. Nothing really stands out, to tell you the truth. Um, let me know. What would yours be? Some guy. Some guy. My favorite. My favorite episode, easily. Um, only because it was King Ezekiel. You had the dead King the Mites. Um, you did have the death of Shiva. You had King Ezekiel finally, yeah. you know, break. I think that that was the strongest episode, and it wasn't even close. Um, Mercy. You know, there was a lot of good, but there was a lot of flaws to it. Um, you know, the damned. Uh, again, just a bunch of fighting, which is okay. Monsters, you know, Rick killed Morales, eh. the big scary you. Um, that's when they were locked in the, the trailer together and they got out. The King, the Widow, and Rick. Uh, that was when Rick goes back to the trash heap. Time for after was Eugene finding a way to get the sanctuary out. And then, of course, the, the mid season finale, which could have been stronger. I thought it was strong, but. I, I say that some guy was easily the best episode. I do like Jerry. Jerry's awesome. He's an awesome person, too. Yes. Uh, yes. Walker Stalker, him and his, uh, I might have told the story already, but him and his mom stayed up like all night, literally, to bake Cobbler for everybody. So when he got an autograph, he gave you like a little plate of Cobbler. See? Su super nice guy. Uh, awesome person. I, I liked him. I really liked him in this episode, too. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you had Carol in it, you had Jerry in it, you had Ezekiel in it. Mm -hmm. You had the end of the Kingdomites in it. I mean, I did bring, it, bring back the fair of the of the Walkers too. Yes, thank you. That was that was a hell of an episode, and and it goes back to what T. W. Brown and and was when he talked about, you know, the slow zombies can be scary too because they keep coming. They don't mm -hmm. stop. They don't sleep. They just keep advancing. Um, you don't have to have running zombies. That's an impossible enemy, but. The walking zombies, the trudging zombies are also, because they don't stop. And this is what that episode was like when they, they started reanimating. All it takes is a leg injury, and you're just as fast as them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
So, um, you know, uh, How It's Gotta Be was my second favorite episode only because wow. it was the this, this season, mid-season finale, and I think it was stronger than the other six episodes. But other than that, you know, all the other episodes seemed like they were the same or they were season seven. And it just, again, you know, it's building up to kill Carl. That was the whole build up to the first half of the season was to kill Carl Grimes by him getting bit on the side and not showing it. By some random <laughs> walkers in the woods, you know, it's well, like, yeah. come on, man. What a way to kill off a great character. You know, like to me, season eight so far, especially the, the first like three episodes or so, it just felt like, like a cheesy 90s action movie. You know, yeah. just like, let's just throw explosions and gunfights and more explosions and more gunfights and shoot some people and crazy stuff. And I was just like, I get, get this got tiring. I did like that they brought back Morales. I think that was awesome. I think that's a bonus in there. Yeah. Um, I think that it is a good way to kind of two sides of the coin. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, I, don't, I didn't like some of the, the dialogue, though. You know, I, I think... They're not painting a picture. They're just bluntly telling everybody, like, this is what you should be thinking right now. And. Yeah. Wow, the, the first three were just kind of. The same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was the same. The first, when you see the first time, it's like, oh, this is going to be awesome. You see the second time, all right, this I like it. Then three times in a row. I do like the callbacks to season one and all the previous seasons. I think they're doing yeah, a good job yeah. with that. Um, just because it's like a shout out to the people who have been watching for eight years. Um, but, uh, I don't, I think that when you get too redundant and when you repetitive and you, you just have the same episodes in a row, just like season seven, how you had the same episodes in a row, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you throw in a different episode at the wrong time. It, it's kind of not, it's not the way to, I mean, I'm not a producer or show director and I, I can tell you right now. I think I would do this stuff a lot different. And I think that it's because I'm a fan and I'm not pompous that I would actually be concerned even if I know, hey, look, they're expecting at least 5 million viewers and I'm getting 7. If I got 13, 14, 15, 16 million viewers and I see, you know, 15, 14, 13, 12 million and I see my numbers going down, it's concerning. And I want to do what I got to do to get back to where it's supposed to be not irritate the fans so i can lose another million and i think that they're, they're just they want to continuously tell the story without the fear of a million fans leaving almost like hey we're still above quota it doesn't matter let's just go until we reach quota and then do something else and it's just a it's starting to make people feel like it's a waste of time <laughs> you know so yeah. one but it is what it is i'm like i said i'm gonna watch it to the end but i don't want to be de- I don't want to watch a show that was so great turn into a show that, you know, just isn't. And, and it feels like it's doing that in these last two years. Just, uh, you know, hopefully something big comes up in the second half. Um, we'll do predictions. So, Jay, your predictions on the second half. <sighs> so, Carl's going to die. Yeah. Um. Just gotta have a more meaningful death. I'm not sure how the hell he's gonna do. He's all weak and shit now, so he can't be like, I'm gonna go out guns a blazing. Yep, that'd be stupid if he does. Go ahead. I mean, who's he gonna shoot? You can't kill Negan. Nope. Uh, can't kill Dwight. Nope. Uh, you know, can't kill what? Simon. Simon's no, not around. He's at Hillside. Yep. Uh, can't kill uh, the other guy because he's at uh, Kingdom. Yep. Uh can't kill any of the other saviors because they're locked up at the hillside mm-hmm. uh who's he gonna kill negan's X-Men? army yeah yeah who they, cares you know those bodies um i don't know you know living this maybe they'll take a page out of the books you know maybe they'll live in the sewers for a little bit kind of bring in uh that uh, okay that could be interesting but i, I don't know i mean It's definitely different. I mean, Alexandria's gone. Kingdom's yep. gone. Yep. Uh, so are they all going to go to the Hilltop? <laughs> you know? I, I mean, I just... The, the trash people, I mean, I, I'm just so sick of them. 
Yeah. Already you got to you got to remember Ocean Side's coming back. Ocean Ocean Side, that was a fucking another <laughs> idiotic moment. Hey, let's go talk to these people. Oh, there's let's one kill leader. dead. Great. Dead. <laughs> That's going to make talking to him easier. It's just like, yeah. come on. You know, and I don't know. I I, I have no idea. I mean, they're going to have to fight back somehow, but they're really running yeah. out of resources here. Yep. So, big complaint by a lot of the viewers is you have too many meaningful deaths on the hero side, I guess you can call it. Um, so, you lost Glenn. You lost Abraham. You lost Carl. You lost Sheba. Um, now, you lost a couple of the Alexandrians. You lost all of the kingdom fighters, just about. Um, lost a random guy from the hillside that everybody's going to mourn a little bit there. Um, so you have meaningful deaths compared to, you lost Sasha. So you have a lot of meaningful deaths on the hero sides. You have the quality of death on the hero sides. You have the quantity of death against the saviors. When are they going to kill a big time savior is the question, which they haven't done yet. So and it will even be them, or it'll be Negan. You know, will it says, be Negan? You know what, you're gonna be punished because you failed. Yeah. You know, maybe. And, I mean, God damn it, but, Simon! You let friggin' Maggie go. Yeah, oh, and fuck. and and that's gonna come back to bite him. I think that they're gearing up for Negan to make an example out of Simon. Yeah. That's the prediction there, um, because he keeps saying we don't kill. They don't do that for no reason. Um, I think that the kingdom is gonna. You know, I think Ezekiel is gonna end up killing the other savior there. I think the last the last guy standing is going to be Negan, um, and and Eugene. I think Eugene is going to have a moment of redemption here. He's starting to show signs that he's starting to understand that what he's doing is wrong by you know letting Father Gareth, uh, Father Gareth get away. Um, Gabriel. Father Gabriel. Gabriel yeah. yeah, Father Gabriel get away with the doctor. So I think that I think that he's going to have a moment of redemption. Um, I think we will get some comic book moments. I think they talked about the muck. Um, getting into your bloodstream or whatever, you know, when you put the muck on you, it gets you sick. I think they're going to use that comic book moment. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, it's, you know what I'm talking about. I won't spoil it. So I think they're going to use that comic book moment. Um, I think you're going to see the comic book moment with the end results. And that's where Rick is going to say, my mercy prevailed over my wrath. The reason why they made the prison is important. I think that that's going to be used. So for people who think Rick is going to die, I don't think he's going to die. Um, I think Rick will make it to season nine. If they kill Rick off, that may be a show ender. Um, but I think that they, I think, I think that they're not that brazen. I think that killing Carl off was a test run to see what it would be like. Um, if they do kill Rick off, man, that's 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 freaking crazy. That's that's, that's it. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a show, and that's gonna no kill a show. That can carry the show like him. Yeah. Um. So I think Andrew Lincoln is safe. You know, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm about 95 that he's safe. Um, I think the big death on the survivor side, you're going to see a huge death. You're obviously going to see Morgan go away. Um, we're going to have a show about what we're going to predict for Morgan. But we'll get in. That's another show. But I think Morgan's going to end up leaving. Um, he's not going to get killed off. I don't think they're going to have a um, flashback moment for Morgan in Fear the Walking Dead. I think that he's. I think they're going to have a big time jump in Fear of the Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. um, I think the big death coming up, and my prediction last time was Carl Grimes. I'm going to state the prediction this time. So it's, it's you know, no, it's you know, no, it's, it's definitely on tape. So I think our big death coming up is going to be a huge fan favorite. Um, it's going to be Carol. I think that she's. I think that she's gonna she's gonna die in a blaze of glory, um, and I think this might propel Daryl Dixon to take Michonne's storyline where he you know Michonne in the comic book went away. I think this is gonna be Daryl's time to go away before season nine, um, and then to come back, you know, to help with the next protagonist. But I think this is gonna push Daryl to the edge here. Um, I think Carol's gonna. You know, do something brave, uh, brave, and save the the survivors. But I think her her time is up. 
Um, so Carl and Carol will be the two two of the final five to die, and it'll just basically leave Rick. You know, Morgan will leave. It'll be Rick and Daryl as the final two from the Atlanta Five. So I think when you look at all the signs, I think it's pointing to Carol. I mean, I could be wrong. I was right about Carl, but I think we're in for some heartbreak. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the freaking image that uh, Rick had where he's old and shit, and there was Carl there. But now it's not, you know, I think we talked about this too, where it's like, wait, is that a time jump and a flash forward dream? You can't. Like, yeah. like, what the fuck? Are they, what are they trying to do with that? It makes no sense to me what they're trying to do with that. No. Um, so uh, uh, there is two graves, though. So I think you're right. I think a second person important to Rick it will uh, will die. Um, yeah. Maybe everyone in this dream will die. Maybe. Maybe Michonne um, and uh, Judah. Michonne and Judah. Too. And it's just Rick th- by himself. So I I try to dissect that thing. J and J dissect. That's what we do. So what I what I try to do was I try to look at it in a logical point of view, which is like you can't expect them to be logical. They tell you exactly what happens at the beginning. So what I think is you're gonna see what happens to Rick at the end of the season. You're gonna see that he suffers this brutal injury to his leg. Mm-hmm. I think when he suffers this injury. He's going to be sleeping and have a dream about, you know, everything good. Um, I look back on it. It wasn't another one bites the dust being played. It was another one rides the bus by Weird Al Yankovic. So it was like a parody. But another one rides the, the bus is saying in the beginning of the show and Carl speaking about it was he was the next one to, to leave the show. Another one rides the bus. Another one bites the dust, whatever. And then I read some things online about owls because people were talking about there was an owl. So I saw the owl statue. Owls bring part death. Um, obviously, Carl had was the only one that didn't have his face exposed. Maybe it's Rick. After he's injured, having a dream of what it would be like with Carl rebuilding Alexandria. And I think we'll see the conclusion of that dream at the end of the season. But I think it's Rick having a dream, imagining Carl being there when they rebuild Alexandria. So it's almost like everything happens to Rick. He gets hurt. And now he's dreaming about his son being with him in this second part of his life. And he's not there. And, and maybe he wakes up and he goes to his grave and says, you know, you know, son, I, whatever. But um, I think that that's what's going to happen. I think that. You're going to have it where he's going to mourn the death of Carl and he's going to say, you know, he's going to say goodbye to Daryl. You know, I, I, I think it's going to be heart wrenching from here on out. But I, I don't I, I just they, they keep teasing Daryl riding away, you know, just keep teasing him not being part of Rick's, you know, dream and not being part of like, you know, what he sees, you know, so he wouldn't just leave without something else big happening and you know what else big for daryl other than carol <laughs> you know think about it or maybe rick being like hey screwball since you drove that truck into the goddamn savior's place there why don't you uh get the hell out of here because yeah, maybe this is all your fault you know it's yeah, like like there's no consequence for for the the good guys yeah you know? none. but you know for the bad guys how you know Negan would smash some heads in, you know, if that was one of them messing up so bad. It's like, that wasn't part of the plan. You went against the plan. You yeah. need to be an example. Yeah. And I I agree. But uh, somebody told me to put my prediction on tape because they didn't believe me with the Carl Grimes thing. If this happens, now there hasn't been any episodes. You can check all the spoiler sites if you want. This is not on any of them. This is me making, you know, just a playing out prediction i could be wrong i was right about carl but i think they had too many signs pointing to it this is completely i'm gonna say this is the edu- this is a guess but it's a you never know with these damn producers maybe they'll let carol live and kill rick off who knows but i think <laughs> I, you never know you, you never know, know. like carol's gonna uh, the new rick grimes you know yeah come on, come on. i like carol i like Melissa mcbride but yeah come on seriously <laughs> you know, I, can... I, yeah, I don't think anyone else can carry the show like him. You know, no, you know, 
Maggie? No. Maggie can't. Throw. No. No, Daryl can't. I mean, he can, but no, you need. He's a secondary piece with Rick. You know what I'm saying? I just, no. Uh, Starsky and Hutch with Rich. I, I can't. Whatever. No, we'll see. Um, has some great questions. Yeah, yeah. I was going to jump into those. Um, these are long, longer questions, so we're only going to answer two. Um, we answered one already in our predictions on season eight, so that was that was one of them. The second question was more, you know, um, I told a lot of people that watch, and I, and I, I want to thank, you know, the the people that ride with me and 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 uh, you know support the show um, that I personally know, um, and you know, this spans from Connecticut and New York and some in Massachusetts. So I got three states behind me. Um, also in Arkansas where Jay is. Um, so, you know, we, we have a big following expected. Um, it's, it's now it's growing and, and it's also expanding out to, um, Oregon with TW Brown. So some of his, some of his, uh, fans are actually tuning into the show and watching the show. Um, so now we, we got some people out West, but, uh, you know, one in particular said, you know, you guys do the zombie movies of the week. Uh, would you consider doing something like a rewrite, uh, a big moment in the show of the week? So I, you know, I thought it was a great idea and, you know, trying to be interactive with the fans. So the first one that I thought of was um, in season two, uh, what what would happen if Shane didn't interfere with Rick's plan of bringing Randall off the farm and 15 miles out or wherever with Daryl. So let's say Shane didn't go crazy, break into the barn, take Randall and orchestrate this plan to kill Rick. Let's say that he just took a ride off somewhere and shot some bullets into a tree or something like that, or had sex with Andrea or something crazy. And Rick and Daryl released Randall. Where they, like they were going to do and then came back to the farm. So you have to you have to look at all the elements with this. So you got to look at there's still a herd out there. You know what I'm saying? The herd was still approaching the farm. So that's that has to stay. That variable has to stay. There's still a conflict with Rick and Shane. That has to stay. There's still Lori kind of hinting to Shane. We talked about this before. Hey, look, I do have feelings for you, but my husband's alive. Hint, hint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So you still have that kind of you know you know you 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 have that betrayal um indirect betrayal between uh uh uh, laurie and and shane um you also have the fact now those are all things that remain the same but instead of shane releasing randall and killing him and then orchestrating to kill rick rick and daryl took him out (laughs) what happens then so Good question. It's almost, yeah. So it's like we rewrite the episode. What comes next after they they set Randall free? Does does he go? Does he somehow make it? We've seen a lot of survivors. We've seen Andrew in season four. Rick sent him out to the prison yard. He came back and got Laurie and T Dog killed. Mm-hmm. Randall is a survivor. Will he make it out in 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 the open and make it back to his group? It's his group. Possibly Negan's group is his group part of the governor's group is his group another group that's really dangerous, you know. So, is this we, a post torture fest, Randall, or is this like, hey, we patch up your leg, we're gonna go ahead and drop you off now, Randall? This is, you know, how T Dog said, time's up. You know, governor's governor's call. You know, governor made the phone call. Time's up, Randy. You know, you know, time's up, governor called or whatever he said. And then he opened up the door and Randall wasn't in there. It's like saying time's up, Randy. And he opened up the door and Randall's in there. So it's like Daryl, Daryl and Rick are bringing Randall away. Like they planned without the interference of Shane. Hmm. But you got to remember the zombies are still approaching. Yeah. Because that doesn't change. Laurie's still getting into Shane's head that, you know, I'm not saying kill him. But I'm saying kill him, you know, um, you still have the fact that Randall. Now you have Randall. The difference is Randall is out in the open. He knows where the farm is. He knows who Maggie Green is. 
what Shane was saying, is that going to come true? So that's the question that was asked. How will we rewrite this episode? Um, and I, um, I know it's a lot on Jay because I actually been thinking about it all day, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, you you want to take a stab at it? Yeah, uh, I think it just stresses Shane out. I think he can't sleep at night. I think I think he's out there looking out the window, saying like those he's gonna bring his whole gain on us. We we can't, you know, we, we can't just sit here. You okay. know, uh, we have to do something. We have to carry our guns, which is gonna p- piss off uh, Herschel. You know, he doesn't want any guns around, but it's like, hey, we have to. Uh, Forty five, I think, eventually he just gets so stressed out from it. He tries to make a move, either try to take Lori and Carl and drive away, or you know, just tries the same thing. tries to get uh, tries to get Rick alone out there. Oh, um, no, you know. And then let's say uh, Randall does come back with the group. You know, say now I have this giant gunfight, and those walkers are now not too far away. You know, they're ready to about bust inside the house, and all of a sudden you have these hundreds of zombies walking towards the house too. Mm-hmm. You know, now what? Now you can't really run because they have guns, but you can't stay because they have the walkers. And it's like, shit, what do we do? Could be interesting. Could be. So what I thought was kind of similar to Jay's. So obviously, if they let Randall go, they have the head start of getting back to the camp. So I think they get back to the camp. And I think when they get back to the camp, um, Shane, like Jay said, has orchestrated some sort of plan to take Lori and Carl. Shane will take Lori and Carl and try to get away, but they're diverted because there's a horde coming. So Daryl, Rick will go back out to look for Shane, Lori, and Carl because obviously somebody alerted somebody else that, you know, they kidnapped them. Well, While they're going. If, uh, if Carl's gone, but, you know, yeah. both of them are gone. <laughs> yeah. So now you have another field trip to find missing people, but they won't have to look far because, like I said, it's all diverted. They will hear the gunshot of Shane and whatnot. And they will, they will, you know, you have to extend it. I think this is where you would extend it to 16 episodes. Randall gets away. He finds a car. Um, he gets away. He drives back to his camp. When Shane and Rick have the confrontation, I think Shane is going to kill Rick and you get the Carl moment where Carl kills Shane. Um, doesn't yeah. shoot him in the head though, you know. Shane comes, reanimates. But on their way back to the farm, the new group comes, the herd comes. You have a Dawn of the Dead moment where you have a fight against the living and the dead. The farm is decimated. You have some deaths there. Um, you know, does Andrea meet up with Michonne? Probably so. But I think that the deaths will be different. I think that uh, the new group will kill off, you know, Patricia and Jimmy. And possibly one other survivor, um, or wound them. But um, I think that it it's inevitable that Randall will get back to his group um, and wreak havoc. So I think Randall dies. I think the group dies. I think they reanimate. Somebody sees that. I think Shane's reanimation is is noticed. And I think you get right back to where they were. I think they could still have done it. Get right back to where they all meet up and they go to the prison. But it's a different meetup. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different direction now it's like what the fuck just happened <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah, it's a little bit of element. lesson learned yeah. yeah yeah it's more of a human conflict and i think they wanted to save the human conflict for season three but i think you would have had i think they teased it a lot in season two but i think that you would have had this the human conflict a little bit earlier um in season two so that's my my guess i'm um, just trying to stick to what the show does try not to take away from season three and completely change the show think that's the way that you could still keep it honest to what it is um or maybe uh you know randall the, the, back on the highway or driving down you know they, they see randall as a walker and it's like so yeah he's a comment like hey you killed him by sending him out there we could have saved him if he stayed on the farm correct yeah, that, that could be like another that. thing too you never know or uh, maybe he didn't make it just like the guy with the orange backpack man, that you know backpack. Uh, that scene still messes me up man that's, that's a sad that's messed up man oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call yourself a good guy, man, when you just abandon someone yeah. on the side of the road yeah, like you, that. Yeah, you, you got three people with arm to the teeth, with a guy with a backpack with pots and pans on the back of it. Yeah. I think that you, I think that you have the ability to at least tie him up, and uh, you know, you know, make sure that he doesn't pose a threat. But I, I think that they were so broken at that point that they just, you know, especially Rick losing 
you know, losing uh, his this season. This is season three. So you got Rick who lost his wife. You got Michonne who just came from Woodbury. You know, feels like she was betrayed by Andrea. You got Carl who just saw he just put his mom down. These these characters are completely broken. They're going to get yeah. guns to fight, so they're just in like kill mode. So I don't think they cared about the guy, but you know, I, I agree with you, man. That's kind of messed up. I think you could have tied the damn guy up. Right. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Jesus Christ! But um, we definitely will get some more um ideas. Um, definitely get them to me. I'll think of some as well. Like I said, we might have a special guest um, in the next upcoming weeks. Um, and that'll be he'll be the reason why I'm not going to walk a stalker convention. He'll have to explain himself. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. I just can't. But um, definitely uh, in closing, you know, you when you watch something or you're a big fan of something, you know, it's easy to defend it, but if you're a true fan, it's like a true friend. If somebody's doing something bad or not, not, you know, if another one of your friends is doing something that's not right, you should be able to tell them, hey, look, man, as a friend, it's not right. So as a true fan of the show, something's not right about the show right now, man. It's it's not the way it was. And I feel like it lost its heart, you know? It, it has. And it's, it's just real talk. And, and like I said, I, I'm guilty of saying episodes are great and, and just trying to be optimistic. But when I watch back and I and I listen to the complaints and I watch back, maybe the pessimism is getting to me a little bit. But then it's not because I watched the episodes. And like Jay said, it's like episode one was good. Episode two was OK. Episode three was just like the other two episodes, you know, and it was just like you have to look back at it and say, damn, what? And the way they killed off Carl. Like what? Like uh. <laughs> why? Yeah, I'm, I'm still not sure like, what lesson that's gonna. You know, every death should, especially those big death, should have some sort of purpose to it. You know, and I get, I don't know. Yeah. Dale was like the first one I get it, but then like every other time, it's like, come on, guys, it's you don't, you don't have to kill the person to prove a point. And you kill. Carl. Killed off Carl Grimes the same way you killed off Jim in season one and Gloria in Fear of the Walking Dead season one. You killed off Carl Grimes the same as you killed off Jim, who was in a total of two and a half episodes, and Gloria, who was on the sister show for one episode, mm -hmm. for one season. You killed off Carl Grimes with 115 episodes under his belt, the same as two meaningless characters the same exact way the same exact way <laughs> for what you know to prove like oh hey take in more survivors there are good people out there it's like you could have what wrote that differently yeah have that guy save carl's life or something done Jesus you know Christ. Pr point like, proven the bite mark was even on the, the the right side of the body just like jim just like glory same exact side it's it was well that, that that is his blind side right yeah that's true <laughs> see it coming oh humor there for disappointment that we have yeah um all right so <laughs> we're we're into the another fan favorite section that i was told was in, in a great idea and uh they love it so we teased it. This is this is for T.W. Brown because he said uh, his the train to Busan was like zombies on a plane. So there are two movies that have zombies on a plane, but one in particular. So you have Quarantine 2 Terminal where the zombie, uh, the quarantine virus um, appeared on the plane. But then they they docked, not docked, they, they landed the plane and it was in the aircraft hangar. So I won't count that one. But for T.W. Brown, who said Train to Busan was like zombies on a plane, zombie movie of the week, Flight of the Living Dead. <laughs> this this movie was zombies on a plane. This is 100% zombies on a plane. This has the fast zombies. This has the ravenous zombies. Um, I mean, I guess it ought to be too fast if it's on a plane. <laughs> it, it, it'll surprise you, Jay. They're, they're, they're pretty fucking fast. And not only that, but it's, you know, it's a great storyline there. Um wasn't too cheesy i liked it a lot uh check it out 
uh, Flight of the Living Dead is this week's zombie movie of the week. Uh, and again, it's a shout out to T.W. Brown who claimed there was a movie like a Zombie on the Plane. So <laughs> there you guys go. And of course, if you have any recommendations for James and I, go ahead and comment you. that down below. You know, we'd love to yep. check out some different videos. Uh, we did have a viewer last week recommend a few eyeballs out there, which we're going to have to look and research up. Uh, so quarantine, is that, that's technically like a, like a rabies virus, though. Is it, that's a viral, it's not necessarily zombies, or? Correct. So um, what we're going to do for the Zombies Movie of the Week is I'm going to expand it, because I have so many zombie movies and kind of zombies and virus viral movies. The only movie that's off my list, and if anybody requests it, I will never take a request from you ever again. I might just ban you from the show is World War Z. Um, do not request that movie. Do not ask about that movie. Do not ask us to review the movie. Do not say you like the movie. <laughs> that movie is banned from J&J Dissect for life. You don't There's know if no, going to, right? It, they, they're going to, and we're just going to hate it even more. Um, it's, that might be the worst thing I've ever seen in my life when it comes to zombies. And I will never, if they have a part two, I will not go and see. I don't care. Um, but... Uh, Quarantine was obviously the movie about the uh, super rabies virus uh, that affected, you know, an entire apartment building. They quarantined it off in Los Angeles. The rabies virus went uh, rabid. I mean, it just completely turned these people into rabid human beings that spread the virus. And everybody knows if you've seen something with rabies, they have to call, you know, animal control. And it takes a lot to put down a rabid animal. It doesn't just take one shot. It takes a lot. So it's the same thing in this movie. Um, obviously, the apartment building was overrun. And then afterwards, you know, you get on a plane and you, you see kind of like the person behind, you know, the outbreak. Um, he releases the virus, you know, inadvertently um, as he's trying to, you know, cause world domination. Um you know, purification of the world, as, as he called it. So on the plane, it gets out, it, you know, air, they try to contain it inside the air, air um, airplane hangar, gets out again. But um, that movie actually has Madison, uh, Mercedes Mason, who plays um, Ophelia and Fear the Walking Dead. She is the main star of Quarantine 2. So when you watch it, you'll definitely recognize her there. Yeah. Um, and they like to recycle the zombie the zombie uh, movie guys and women in the in the movies and the show. So definitely check that out. But um, the movie of the week this week is Flight of the Living Dead. Is really no famous people that are in anything, <laughs> but <laughs> it's still a pretty damn good movie. I mean, you look at the back. Look at that zombie right there. Look at his face. He's just all fucked up. Look at him. He's just crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> <you know? laughs> so. You just know, you know, it's gonna be good when you know you have zombies that look like that and can run. So, and they're on the plane. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, good show. Good uh, season eight kind of tie up here. Well, first, I guess uh, mid season, season eight tie up. Yep. Uh, we'll be watching, you know, the next mid, mid season, uh, of obviously. Um, and we'll give you guys our. I take on that. We have a couple more episodes in between that, though. We have, oh yeah, this is a Pro Bowl weekend, then Super Bowl weekend, and then Walking Dead weekend. Uh, I think we'll be in Cancun for that third one. So we got two more possibilities for shows here. Okay. All right. Um, so, so we'll plan something out for you guys. Keep you posted as far as what we'll do. Uh, we have uh, what season six. Right? That's a death. I, that's a promise. So we will get to season six review because everybody wants to review the greatest season of The Walking Dead. Okay, we'll do a season six. We can always break up to a first half season six and second half season six. Yeah. Um, but then I'll keep it. Keep let you guys know what's going on. Uh, then uh, once we get back from our little vacay over here, um, we all moved into our new place and everything. Uh, you know, let you guys know. Uh, as far as the new episodes, we'll be into the new, you know, mid-season, so uh, we'll definitely do our weekly shows there, and then uh, we'll let you guys know what our summer plans will be. Jesus, yep. summer plans. Crazy. Yeah, yeah it stops up. snowing up here, I'll think about the summer. Yeah, it's right, not yeah. Gonna... <laughs> This morning, yeah, people are slipping. T-shirt yeah, and pe shorts down here. Yeah, get, yeah good job. Yeah. People are slipping on ice up here, and, you know, not making it to work. It's, it's just, it's, it's a clusterfuck of ice. So, you know, I just, I'm tired of it now. You know, you shovel, and then it's like 40 or 50 degrees, and everything looks good, and then we get shit. Like, it's almost like 
uh, I say shit show on wheels. It's like a shit storm that just hits us after we have like 40 degree weather for three days and then we have snow for two weeks straight. It's, it's just been a, a big time snowy winter up here and uh, I'm looking forward to the warmer weather, but I don't know if it's, if it's ever going to come. <laughs> Hopefully soon for you guys. Like May. Up in, uh, what was that, Canada? Oh, is. God. It might as well be, Jay. It might as well be. It might right. as well be Nova Scotia or Greenland. <laughs> Alberta, right? Isn't oh, where you, where you are? God. Soon it's going to be inhabitable. People aren't going to be able to commute here. Right. Ridiculous. All right, guys. Um, hey, yeah, thanks for watching. Once again, I guys can donate. Links down below if you guys can donate. Just follow us on those social medias. Chat with us. We love communicating, uh, communicating with our fans. It's so much fun. It's probably our favorite part of it. Uh, we do this just because we like talking and uh, playing games and everything and uh, interacting with you guys. And, of course, 1% of all proceeds from these videos goes towards charity. Um, yeah, James, you got anything else to close us out? Nah, just, just stay tuned. Hopefully we can get uh, the special, the new special guest on the show. If we can't, we definitely will bring you something else. Um, and, uh, like I said, just gear up for, for the second half of Season 8. And, uh, you know, we'll be right with you dissecting the show. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.